go. Hey everybody, this is Dave with Dave's Island Instruments. Uh, we are going to be doing a special show today for you. Every uh, two weeks we have a hand pan class uh, that shows people about our hand pans that we build here at Dave's Island Instruments. Uh, we're located in Lakewood, California, if you haven't uh, been familiar with this before. Um, I am the owner of Dave's Island Instruments. My name is Dave. We call it DII now. And uh, so we're happy to be here with you today. The special show today is we're doing like a sound healing show today uh, with Miguel Medina. He's going to be joining us in a few minutes. And Miguel Medina is awesome. He makes uh, his own native flutes. And we just wanted to uh, bring him back. He was here with us a couple months ago. We did a show and uh, the combination of the hand pan music and the native flute music combined together is just an absolute amazing sound. So we hope that you enjoy it today. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel here on the low, your right hand side below the screen. It's in, usually in red letters. It says subscribe. So please subscribe to our great to have you as a uh, channel channel subscriber. Also, if you uh, haven't seen our Facebook page, uh, like our Facebook page. I believe you can find it at Dave's Island Instruments. We're also on Instagram at Dave's Island Instruments. So check us out on either platform. Uh, but here we are today. We're going to be bringing Miguel on in just a minute. Um, I think right now would be good. So Miguel, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. How you doing, Dave? I'm great. Thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Great. I love hanging great out with you guys. You. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, I had a great time the last time you were on. And uh, last time, I think we were primarily talking about just the way hand pan and native flute works together and, you know, the, the way they sound yeah. together. Uh, but this time, uh, we're going to be talking specifically about uh, doing a sound bath, kind of uh, engaging in a sound bath environment here. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm personally not like the sound uh, healing person, uh, but I know that you have some experience with that. Um, so please let us, can, can you give us like a little bit of an overview for those of you who might not out there who's watching, uh, that might need not be familiar with sound healing or a sound bath. I know that you've done it a couple of times. So, right. So, so when I think of sound healing and this is a personal thing for me, I mean, there's a lot of science behind, um, you know, what sound does to the body and music actually does for us mind, body, spirit. For me, I actually have more of a background in, um, let's call it ceremonies, in Native American ceremonies, different types of ceremonies. And when I think of sound healing with music, I think of basically creating a personal ritual or ceremony um, with music. And so to me, what makes that different than any other music? to me or what makes any ceremony a ceremony to me is just the intention behind um behind what you're doing and and like before we got on we were talking about fishing fishing can be a very spiritual ceremonial thing too anything that you put intention behind becomes in, in a ceremony and so i think that's key number one and i think that we all know that um music and sound and playing music also um, can shift our mindset, can shift our emotions, um, can help us feel. Sometimes it might help us cry. Sometimes it might get us excited and make us wanna dance or celebrate. There's so many things that music can do. And so, you know, last spring started a healing music band with, um, a friend of mine, and we called it Ame, which means a healing music experience. And again, the premise behind that is just acknowledging and understanding that music is healing. And specifically hand pans and um, Native American flutes, most everybody feels that same way, recognizes that the type of music, the type of sounds that come out of these instruments, their mindset from that busy, chaotic mind that we carry throughout our days and our jobs sometimes and just in this society, um, it gives us respite from that. It helps us yeah, get more absolutely. in touch with our emotions and things like that. And I think that yeah. also there's two things there. There's the part of um, receiving a sound bath, so to, so to speak. Like maybe at the end here, we're going to share a little bit of music and talk about maybe how I would do that or or something like that. 
But also we want to address for all the people that are thinking about buying a hand pan or thinking about buying a flute because they're looking to create that for themselves. And so that's the other subject that I think that we should talk about too is like, um, how do people receive healing from their own instrument on a personal level at their home and, and how, you know, how to approach that, I guess. Yeah. And being, uh, by the way, since we're live on YouTube uh, right now, it's uh, probably going to be a little bit of a different experience, just even for you and I producing this kind of sound uh, bath kind of environment, just because we're not together uh, in a unit, uh, like with a group of people. So it's probably just going to be a little bit different. But I think the people at home can enjoy this. In fact, uh, I know that in the past, sometimes I've just turned on like a YouTube, like a live YouTube thing. Um, and I just put it at the side of my bed and I just lay down on my bed and just listen to it rather than watch it. So, um, you know, that way you can just hear it and just have your eyes closed and just relax to the music that you're hearing. So hopefully yeah, the people will be able absolutely. to do that today and just relax. You know, speaking of laying down. So the other day, my daughter was uh, in the house and she was like laying down on the floor and she looked at me and she goes, Dad, when's the last time you laid down on the floor and just looked up the ceiling? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. Like, you know, on my bed, I look lay down on my bed. But when's the last time I laid down on the floor? And. It is kind of a different experience, don't you think? Laying on the floor versus a bed. Absolutely. It, I, absolutely. It's something different about it. It's almost like laying on the ground during camping and looking up at the stars. It, it just makes you mm. feel it somehow, or there's something, a different weight about it. I'm not sure. But perhaps somebody out there is watching could uh, lay down on the floor today and, and enjoy the music uh, as well. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I, I probably lay on the fo floor more than the average person. I don't know. <laughs> oh, right on. Okay, cool. Between, just from yoga, mostly flutes, yoga. Between the flutes? Yeah. Right no, not not usually in the workshop, but okay. <laughs> so hey, another thing is a lot of people that are watching today might either already own a hand pan or they might already uh, play a native flute, either made by you or by somebody else. So I just want to let mm -hmm. people know a little bit about the instruments we're playing today and how they're tuned, uh, so how they work together, right? So I'm playing. Absolutely. This is a we call this an RS model hand pan. Uh, it's made of stainless steel and it's tuned to a D minor scale. Uh, we call it the sunset scale. Um, a lot of people out there in handpan call it uh, Celtic minor, but either way, it's a D minor handpan. Within the D minor scale, there's also another option you can play uh, in A minor as well. So mm -hmm. uh, on Miguel's end, he's got a couple different flutes today. So tell us about the flutes that you're playing. I think they're like D minor and A minor. Yeah, so today we have a couple of different things because there's also, just like uh, Dave said, he said that's a Celtic minor. So generally speaking, Native American flutes are usually a pentatonic minor, and there's modes one and four. They're just a slightly different, um, there's like a note or two difference within those two different modes. And there's also other minors. There's a seven note minor that's an Aeolian minor. So today... I will be playing a D minor, I think, an A minor drone flute, which is another style flute, and then an Aeolian, a high D Aeolian minor flute, which is a seven note minor. And all of those nice. will work within it. And like I, I could also make a F major likely and it would play with it as well. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of that, you, you just talked about you had a low D and a high D, that sort of thing. Uh, you were telling mm -hmm. me earlier about uh, in the Native uh, American culture, uh, when they would uh, sing, sometimes they would start with a high sound and then move down to the lower because they're bringing the spirits from the from the sky. Oh, down to yeah. The yeah. So, so yeah. Can you just so, reflect on that real quick. I thought it was a really cool story. Yeah. So um, my I have a lot of background and hang out with a lot of Native people and spend a lot of time on um, the Turtle Mountain Reservation specifically. That's in North Dakota. And the person who taught me how to make flutes actually introduced me to native ceremonies. And uh, my heritage, I'm half Puerto Rican. And within that, I have indigenous blood too. We're Taino and um, African-American, Hispanic. And so I've always been drawn to um, Native American culture and just different indigenous cultures from around the world. And I just happened to fall in my life when I met that said he'd teach me how to make flutes and then he took me to some of the first ceremonies that both have become a huge huge part of my life and so within that um talking about sound healing in the native american cultures 
um, music is a key component to their spiritual walk, their whole life, everything they do, their song involved. And there's a lot of singing involved and drumming and also flute playing. Um, but yeah, so what, what I was taught is when they sing, um, they oftentimes sing really high in pitch and then the song goes lower in pitch and, and that symbolizes calling out to the great spirit and ask the great spirit to come down to earth to be with us during our prayers. So yeah, yeah. so that's what that was. Yeah. I love that. Today, today we're doing yeah. a little bit of the reverse though, right? We're going from low to high, I think. Yeah, and so the other thing that I've learned just through about sound and about music is also the different, um, like we have different chakras in our body, different um, energy fields in our body, and that, that comes from Middle Eastern teachings. And so the first thing that I like to do in like a sound healing performance is to ground. And I just feel like, you know, you get your feet on the ground, you um, um, get rooted, you know, and the root chakra would be the note C, and then the next chakra up would be D, and so we're in D minor, and I just have always felt intuitively like the lower register sounds are very grounding sounds. The didgeridoo, um, just lower pitched tones in general seem to really ground and center me. And then like in the Native American, the quote unquote traditional love flute would be key of F. And like we say, this scale actually can play an F as well. And um, the key of F is considered the key of the heart, right? And so a lot of people play Native American flute in G, F, sharp, F. And that was considered the love flute. And that's very heart opening. And then I feel like here, you know, crown chakra, um, well, key of B, key of A is, is working with things up here, right? Things that represent enlightenment and... Um, you know, opening the third eye, things like that. Yeah. That's like, and, but just in general, I feel like higher pitched sounds are more crown opening for me intuitively. That's how I've always felt about it. So, so that's kind of the opposite. So I feel like if we start low and then we move into the mid range tones and then end high, it's, um, it's rep, it's representing that it's, it's representing us coming from the earth, grounding from the earth, getting into our hearts, and then elevating to a spiritual level. So yeah, it's like opposite of what we talked about with the singing. Dave, Miguel, we got a question yeah. really quick. Oh, we've got uh, a question on uh, here, YouTube Live. We're on YouTube yes. Live, and we've got a question. Uh, it's from Manifesting Vibes. It says, hello. Mm -hmm. So I am doing a report for my world music class, and I wanted to know where are Dave and Miguel performing. So I guess they want to know where uh, you are right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm down here in Lakewood, California, and Miguel, you are? Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon, yep. West yeah. Coast. Bringing the mm -hmm. world together. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey, this is nice to know that somebody out there is doing a report on us. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my cool. daughter is doing a doing a report she's a vi in video class and she's doing um a big i forgot what it was but it's her main it's her main report she's doing a documentary on sound healing so she'll probably awesome. use clips from this today too wow yeah. killer yeah yeah well anyway that was a wealth of information thanks for passing that along uh i, I really love the unique perspective you have of tying in the uh like you said the middle eastern uh, chakras and then uh, with the native american perception of how mm -hmm. sound works and singing and that sort of thing so yeah. that was a really question so thank you for that i've not heard that yeah. before yeah so, absolutely uh, what do you say we get started okay you ready started? yeah yeah we can yeah we can yeah we can do that so let's um i'll just talk to the people thanks everybody for coming and joining us um again we're doing the best that we can we're in this interesting time right now with all that's going on in the world and this pandemic that we're dealing with. And um, it's a time that I think we all need to take time out of our lives to breathe, relax, um, you know, take respite from all of that's going on in the media, all that's going on in the world and that's going on in, in our lives. I know that a lot of people are going through a lot of 
inner turmoil, so to speak. And just, it seems like the world is just going through that right now. And, um, so when we talk about this, I think when we do this sound healing music, you know, the first thing that I would do in an actual performance when I, if I was there in front of people is, is talk about vulnerability. So, so first I'll say there's three things that we, we can do today, at least touch on. And it kind of, kind of hits on past, present, future, but it's more about, um, in any ceremony that I would do, there would be a cleansing period, letting go, um, thinking about maybe our problems or our stresses and, and, um, practicing letting them go. I don't know, whatever that is to each individual, asking for help from whatever that they ask for help from to help let that go. Um, and then, you know, whatever that is, thinking about those things that stress us out and trying to, you know, let the music take them away from us, at least um, for a while. And then we would touch on being in the present moment, just really being honest with ourselves, honest with where we're at in our lives personally right now, how we're feeling, taking time to actually slow down and observe how we're feeling in our bodies, in our heart, and our minds, and being just present with that and letting the music help tap you into that. And thirdly, I always like to visualize where I'm going, where I would like to be in my life, and always having gratitude for the things that we have, because we can't really bring in anything. This is my experience. We can't bring love, prosperity, beauty, um, you know, joy into our lives if we don't already have come from a place of gratitude for the things that we have and just to have a, an opportunity to live a good life and have family and friends and, and health and all those things. So those are the three things that we would touch on. And so I guess what I'll do is just ask Dave, why don't you just start playing? I'll speak a little bit and then I'll chime in with the, with some okay. music as well. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Okay. So we're going to be playing in D minor. So if anybody's out there and wants to maybe experiment with their own hand pan or if they have a flute and you can play in your own room, uh, I'm just playing in D minor this time. And I'm going between my the right side of the hand pan going to the left side, which is basically my D minor chord going to my A minor chord. So here we go. Yeah, so, you know, we just want to, again, be honest with ourselves and um, just relax, you know, you know, be aware of, you know, things that maybe don't feel quite right. Um, allow yourself to be vulnerable, you know, that's a thing that's very important when we're trying to heal from something, play healing music or um, even use music as a way to let go or to use it as medicine. Honesty is very important. So check in with yourself and try to let go of those things that have been bothering you recently. You know, whatever that, whatever ails you in your heart and your mind. And one of the things for me that I'll share is the disunity that it feels like we have in the world right now, that it feels like um, that there's so many varying points of now with this very strong, important issues that have been coming up recently. And um, I feel like it's separating the people and that's something that weighs heavy on my heart. So I'm thinking about that and I'm gonna play some music and do my best to let some of that go.
So, so that's how I would start. And I just want to talk a little bit about um, playing the instruments, right? And another way that I was taught about the Native American flute, which I think can apply to all music, is, you know, there's a mathematical and uh, quote unquote, by the book way of learning music. And um, one of the sayings that that we have in the Native American flute world is that you don't play the flute, you pray the flute. And, and that in the old days, I'm, I'm actually pretty good friends with this guy, his name is Kevin Locke. He's actually the oldest elder left on the Standing Rock Reservation. And he tours the world doing storytelling and Native American flute playing. And he's a traditional hoop dancer. That's a, that's a tradition that is, is, is lost mostly. He's, he's one of the few that still do that today. And it, it has to do with these small hoops that are just a little bit, I don't know what, 20 inches in diameter or so. And he will dance with sometimes up to 20, 25, um, hoops and spin in a circle dancing and doing all these formations of eagle wings and star formations and all these things with these hoops it's beautiful anyway he still plays the old traditional flutes that weren't tuned to 440 hertz or 432 hertz they were just tuned and the way that they were i'll back up a little bit is that you would use your hand to mark where you would put the first hole and then ah, just a nice. finger width between each hole finger width and then a hand and then that's where your sound block would be. And whatever yeah. that that key turned out to be or whatever scale, they just played that. And they let the, each flute would give a person a song. Would particular sound, a particular song, and they would spend time with that flute, create a relationship with that flute and find the voice that wanted to come out of that particular instrument. And so even still today, even with these professionally tuned concert tuned flutes, um, that approach can be applied. You know, we go out into the woods. Um, I think that mixing both learning technique, learning um, the st certain steps to help you progress and even potentially reading music is all great, but also 
taking time to get in touch with yourself, taking time to get past your own personal discomfort of um, what others are thinking, but more importantly, what you think about yourself and that self-defeating language that you have about how you're not good at anything or you're not good at music or whatever language you're telling yourself. Just be with your instrument. Enjoy what sounds that are coming out of there. And, um, you know, again, it's about allowing yourself to be vulnerable and um, expressive and letting yourself emote through whatever instrument that you're playing. And I think that both of these instruments, hand pans and flutes, are very good at um, just singing. They make beautiful sounds and... and um, they're very forgiving in that way. You can get you can get yeah. far in a short period of time because they just naturally sound beautiful. So yeah, so yeah, so. so uh, this, yeah. And the, the next thing Go we're ahead. playing, we're we're going to be doing a, like a call and response thing, right? Yeah. A minor. I yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like and that. And it's actually very interesting because really like that's that a, the call and response. Obviously, kind of comes more from a singing genre you know of, of being human mm -hmm. you, you know humans probably sang before they did anything and so mm -hmm. uh, call and response is very familiar to all of us so um i think it's uh really going to be cool we, we played around with it last night and you're you're playing the a minor flute right yes i'm going to play this a minor drone right, flute. So Ooh, which way the, is it this way. No oh nice so the notes on that one were a c d e g a and a I see. Do you know what the notes are from low to high on that? Oh, man, no. Not by heart. I'd have to yeah. read them on a tuner. No, not, no worries. I was just kind of wondering because I'm, I'm thinking about how it works with my hand pan. I think it's it's pretty close to something like that. Yes. So really, on my hand pan, I think the only not playing when I'm doing this call and response with you is the F. I'm just kind of avoiding that F because everything else tends to work. So see how this goes. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right. And so so now we're going to move on and talk about um, being in the present moment. And we sort of did that in the first, but maybe we were letting go of some of the past of, of the things that we were that have been ailing us from the things that have happened to us. Who knows when? Maybe yesterday, maybe this morning, maybe, you know, years ago. And um, now we're just checking in with ourselves. We're just trying to center ourselves and be present and let this song, you know, maybe be a dedication to being okay with who you are, you know, and honoring who you are and um, being grateful for who you are and what you have. And so, so that's what we can dedicate this little song to. All right, Dave. Thank you. 
Miguel, I love playing with you, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's it's so just good. really wonderful. I love hearing you play. Thank and, you so uh, much. You know, uh, talking about being present, you know, and that sort of thing earlier. Uh, when I play with you, uh, I find that I actually can uh, bring myself inward a little bit and be, be more mm -hmm. present with my instrument. And yeah. uh, sometimes, you know, when you practice by yourself, sometimes you can find all the problems that you're messing with you know and, and then you get frustrated because you're dealing with all of your internal problems but it's really mm -hmm. nice playing with somebody else because you hear what they're doing and then it just kind of takes you away from your inner thoughts a little mm -hmm. bit so Absolutely. even though we're producing this for other people to listen to it i mean personally it works for me as well just as a performer i'm feeling more relaxed already it's it's amazing yeah thank you yeah absolutely and i'll i'll admit myself to being um a musical instrument maker and being like I eat breakfast with flutes on my mind. I mean, everything I do, I yeah. live and breathe flutes. And yes, there's definitely times where I feel like that my job is less about um, the enjoyment of the healing properties of the instrument for myself, but more a service of creating these flutes and mm -hmm. putting my whole heart and soul into creating these so that other people can do that but oftentimes i forget to use it as a tool myself you know yeah but that's why i have hand pans see that up there right right right. yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's um, interesting you say that somebody told me that one time uh they said uh it was uh abria joseph told me uh sometimes it's hard to do things for yourself but if you put the intention towards doing it for others it makes it easier to do right and I almost right. feel like that what you just said about making flutes and passing along that goodness. I, I feel the same way about the hand pans. It's 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 mm -hmm. like uh, 
it's like you're producing this thing that's you know that people are going to appreciate it down the line and it just makes you feel good it's amazing yeah yeah but in that moment too same i was just finding myself um just being immersed in the emotion behind what we were playing and it's like everything else goes away and i think that's the point of what we're trying to portray today is just that yeah. music can do that music can do that you can express yourself in a way or just let yourself go and i think that we all need a break from our jobs and our brains and our minds and and in learning instruments which i'm sure a lot of people are thinking about that maybe that are watching today in learning instruments it can be so heady sometimes and it can be so um yes we we can be more self-defeating because we want to get to a place and that we don't enjoy the journey oftentimes but but we have to take moments to just enjoy where we're at and um, express what we can for now and yes what makes um good musicians is is determination and practice but also it's also letting go of this that's a big yeah, part i think of yeah. musical expression for sure so. yeah no absolutely yeah you know hey hey uh uh just i want to take a moment for anybody that's uh whoever's watching um i think right now if you wanted to write in our comments section if you have a question uh feel free to in the comment section ask us a question we'd be more than happy to answer it um and then mm -hmm. uh also like if you don't have a question if you would just want to express uh, a sentence of gratitude like we were just talking about gratitude uh i think that'd be kind of fun uh if you wanted in the post uh, in our comment section just a, a message of gratitude or a question for us so anybody out there that wants to do that go for it it'd be fun fun to see everybody's i guess i'll i was talking about being in, in the present moment so you know i'll i'll express gratitude for my wonderful daughter who got to you got to meet for one second yesterday, Dave, and, and um, I'm just grateful for that in my life. I'm grateful to have health and, um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for my job. I don't know if you mm -hmm. feel the same way, Dave, but <laughs> I feel every so, day I wake up, man, I wake yeah, up every man. day being feeling grateful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so blessed to be able to offer that. And and yeah, it feels like work some days, but I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know, for anything. Yeah. And and uh, it's it's my work, but it is also my um, therapy in a sense, like going into the shop and create. I, I might have said this the last interview we had, but. I, I tell people sometimes I just need a vacation. I need two weeks of in, uninterrupted flute making and I would be so happy. <laughs> you <know>? uh, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. funny. My wife frequently says, Dave, you need to stop working. I'm like, but I enjoy what I do. I like going out there and getting something done. It's, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. a, again, you know, the cool thing about making instruments too is uh, when you're on that final process, I don't know about you, but for me, when I do that final tuning on the instrument, I just love sitting there and playing it for a minute. It just gives you so much mm -hmm. gratification uh, and, you know, a feeling like, hey, I did that, you know, and Absolutely. Uh, you know that it's going to go into the hands of somebody else, else that's going to appreciate it. So right, I don't know, I just, it's really we got, fun making these things. We have Absolutely. comments pouring in. I'm going to go through these really quickly. Oh, great. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm not going to put them on the screen. There's too many. All right. Uh, we have, let's see, Jackie, now I'm me again. Uh, Victoria Cleveland, thank you for providing the music and spiritual feelings. Manifesting Vibes, thank you very much for doing this. I've never experienced anything like this before, and I'm grateful and thankful mm -hmm. that I am here and healthy. Awesome. Yeah. Meg Cushing, thank you for both pouring out your hearts into making and playing these instruments. My Luna hand pen brings me joy, or brings me and my family so much joy. Mm -hmm. And use it as a music for meditations I create, saving up for one of your flutes, Miguel. That's Meg Cushion. You're both <laughs> nice. inspiring. Uh, Jim Smith, playing with harmonics. It is wonderful with the native flute. What a discovery to be able to emulate the flute. Jackie Beery, the boss. I'm grateful yeah. for a slow moment to enjoy Miguel Dave with my kids. Actually, your daughters mm. are listening, Dave. Excellent. 
listening with mm-hmm. my girlfriend uh, Kyle's crafts listening with my girlfriend and sending you both the most grateful psychic embrace so glad to know Miguel and honor my interactions with him more than words can say Victoria again music is for the soul Gary Gatori, Miguel I bought one of your beginner flutes they are the best and day's work in his hand pan is bad best one of the best I think and then Jackie Berry Dave here we go take us on vacation Dave (laughs) (laughs) yes that's it guys right now sounds like a plan Uh, thank you Daniel Um, all right well what do you say Uh, what was the the third the third part of our uh, sound healing was uh, bring uh, moving into intentions towards the future right yeah 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 yep setting intentions or visualization you know and i i yeah. like this part um this is a big practice this is for me um i would say it's also one of the things that i bring to uh, the the native american spiritual community too is there's different ceremonies that i do that i offer to other people and oftentimes they might be called a buffalo ceremony because in in um in that culture, um, oftentimes the buffalo represents abundance, represents prosperity. And um, the Plains people, they were, um, they were solely dependent on the buffalo. And, um, and they got their food, their shelter, their clothing, their tools, so much of their existence, their their um what made them thrive in their tribes is when the buffalo came and Mm -hmm. so maybe there was times where they were without and they were um you know maybe a little bit hungry but they always kept singing their songs and they kept praying because they always knew the buffalo would come and then this might be a little bit sad and we won't touch too much on this but (laughs) there came a point a time where maybe the buffalo didn't come because there weren't weren't enough buffalo to to sustain them anymore and so with that then you know there's a lot more to it this is just a symbolic uh, way of saying it but um the buffalo didn't come anymore and with that the people got they were lost the native people were lost and still some of them are today um because they lost their way of life and the buffalo represented their way of life it represented the 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 um their riches so to speak so anyway you know one of the things that i have been called to by spirit to remind people is that the buffalo never left you and that there's this story about the buffalo coming out of the ground and unearthing itself um from the earth to come back to the people and tell them that um, you thought I left you, but I never left you. My spirit has always been with you and anything that you need in your life is here for you to have. And so, so that's something that I share in these different ceremonies. And this is a piece of that. This is something that I practice in my life all of the time, all of the time is, is um, visualizing where I want to be and, um, and also doing the work, whatever that means to me. You know, we don't want to get into that now. But doing the work to um, um, receive the things that you're asking, and also, um, you know, having gratitude and living your life as if they are already here. And so that's what we're doing. And so, yeah. If, and I think that what we want to do also is, you know, we're going to play this more upbeat song and a high pitched song. And this to me is also celebration, right? Because we know our greatest life is coming to us. We know that um, we are heading in the right direction. We know that we're moving toward our best self, our best life. And we can see it. And we know what it looks like. And we can feel it. We can taste it. The beauty and the excitement of our best life. And so that's what I want to do is make this song a celebration song because we know that beautiful things are coming to us really quick miguel um uh sorry uh right before your song amy i don't know if we have time enough for this question but they 
She says, hi, this is lovely. Thank you for doing the sound bath. I would love to hear about both of your musical journeys, like how you got started and how that has changed your life. So I guess we're going to have to bring Miguel on again. So well, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, we could do yeah, that next time. time. That'd Absolutely. be cool. I love hearing yeah. the musical journey. So that's that's awesome. Also, yeah. another one from Jackie Beery. This this lady, she will not quit. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> one of my flutes uh, smells smoky. Is there a way to de-smoke it, or is that normal for some flutes, or just embrace the smokiness? That's what she's asking. Um, I would say drop me an email, and um, yeah, there's probably some things that we can do, mostly time. The reason why it's smoky is because oftentimes holes are burnt into the flute for proper tuning. It's easier to get it really precise tuning, and sometimes there's some residual smoke smell that will dissipate over time but you can also email me and there's some things that i can probably share with you to help speed up that process it's all for now it's all for now okay awesome. so yeah so again i just want to also express some gratitude to you daniel the guy in the background that's right so, daniel and carrie too yeah, and Carrie, yeah, thanks so much for taking care of us, all that you do for both of our businesses and for putting this together so that we can share this with everybody. And thank you again, Dave, for just being who you are and a kind-hearted man that's offering beautiful things to the, the world, the community, you know, and, and um, the DII family. And I'm glad to be a yeah. part of the DII family. That's great. Yeah, thank you. And We're so, glad you're here. Thank you, Miguel. Yeah. Actually, Gary said it depended on the kind of smoke that it was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's do this. Let's have a little celebration song. And I don't know if we're just going to play and then it's going to end and we're going to fade out. Or are we speaking some more after? Um, we are yeah. close to time. We have nine minutes. So, yeah, let's... Oh, okay. uh, I think we don't have any uh, more questions. You guys were amazing. I almost fell asleep, but I knew I had to like produce this, so it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah. But we we'll have our time. We will. We're coming up to visit you for sure, Miguel. Oh, so. that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I want to come up there and check. Beautiful that out. up here. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so just play till you it. feel you're good. Um, we'll field any questions, you guys, uh, but we'll probably answer them on the next one and. You know, thanks for being with us. Thank you, guys. All right. Okay, so, yeah, and I want to thank everybody who chimed in to listen to us today, and um, I wish you your best life and love and happiness, good health, mind, body, spirit, and that, um, that you feel good in the midst of all that's going on in the world today. And so we'll sing this song, and I did want to also share – what I'm visualizing and, and I expressed what um, was, was troubling me in these days. And so what I'm, what I'm visualizing is unity amongst the people walking down the street and having someone who maybe looks come from somewhere different than me and that they greet me with a smile and I greet them with a smile. It's my dream that, and what, what I see is when I look into another person, person's eyes I see myself and I see the great spirit and joy and happiness and hugs and that people aren't afraid to hug each other and that we can gather together in groups and celebrate life and that no matter what's going on in the world that we can find our commonalities and that we can be on the same side because we all are on the same side. So, so with that, that's what I'm visualizing and we'll, we'll play some music. All right.